Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Moms in Real Estate. Today's guest is Natalie DiBer DiBernardo, and she is amazing. If you guys think that you are too busy for real estate, you have not met this girl yet because she gets pulled in a million different directions. She gives all over the place and yet has an amazing business. So let's get started. Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hey, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. So Natalie, get us started. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, there's a lot to tell. Um, so I have been in real estate for 15 years now, um, and it's going to be going on 16 soon. Um, I have three kids. They are almost 13, 11, and 9. I have my oldest a girl. And then I have um, two stepkids as well that I kept as my own. So I am a busy, busy gal. I run a couple other businesses. Our family has a daycare in Gilbert. Uh, we am a part of a church. Um, my family has a church. I breed dogs, um, <laughs> hands, and a little bit of everything. <laughs> yes, you do. How do you do all that? Uh, I don't, you know, I, my sister calls me a freak because I'm one of those people that don't require a lot of sleep. Like if I get about four or five hours, I can wake up and function the next day. So I don't sleep a lot. Um, and I don't, I don't really, I, a lot of things tend to get missed, but you know, I just, I just work until I get it done. So it's, uh, I, I am that if I could like, if, if it's like, okay, I have eight hours till I have to wake up the next day, I start to stress out. Like, I have to put myself to sleep. I wish I could be like, oh, four or five hours, I'm going to be awesome tomorrow. Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I've just trained myself to do that. Um, but I used to not be like that. When I was younger, I was a sleeper. And then all of a sudden, I hit 30 and I'm like up at 5 a.m. for no reason, you know, staying up till midnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I used, to, I used to never sleep. And now I think I got to have at least six hours. I have to, or I'm a hot mess. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also drink espresso. So, like, I will drink wine when it's time to go to bed. And then in the morning, yeah. I have four shots of espresso and cream. So maybe that's how I get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe that sounds so good right now. <laughs> what? I said, that sounds so good right now. And I love that other people have my same routine. Like, you have to have wine at night. You have to have coffee in the morning. But four shots of espresso with cream sounds good. Yeah. It's, I like rice. I got it in my cup here. Slowly drink it. <laughs> nice. Well, you have to start to talk to your audience about, um, obviously, like you exude positivity. I can feel it from the other mm -hmm. side of the screen. But you've got to talk to your audience a little bit about what you've had to go through to get to the other side. Oh, my God. You know, I try, I try to be positive for sure, but I definitely can get into the, I call, I call it the dark side where I get into this little spiral of, I can't do this. I can't do this. Um, and yeah, I try to slap myself out of it. It works sometimes. Um, you know, it's been a, it's been a big process. Um, my kids, as they've gotten older, it's gotten easier, but, um, it's been a lot of trial and error. So when I was young, I was very, very afraid of failure. I was like, failure is the worst thing that can happen. I didn't do anything that I didn't know I would succeed in. So I was an artist and I didn't try out for any roles I wouldn't get. I didn't, you know, apply for any schools that I didn't think I would make it into because I was so afraid of failing that it just kept me from doing anything. And um, I, as I became a woman. Um, and I went through so, so much. I, um, was married for nine years and, uh, my ex was in the military and it just kind of at the end of that nine years, I was like, I can't make this work anymore. Um, and after I got divorced, never seeing myself ever being divorced, my parents were married till the day she died. Um, and I just never saw myself failing at that. Once I kind of failed at that, it was like a succession of things happened that was, um, I got divorced. I had to start over. I, I really was in real estate 
part-time when I was married because I had, he was gone all the time and I had so many things I was doing. Um, and I felt I had to like pick my business back up. I had to basically start from scratch. Um, a couple years later, I lost my mother. She died um, after a 10 year battle with cancer. A couple years after that, I, my stepdaughter was murdered by her boyfriend. Um, and I just kept experiencing all these things in life that I was terrified of that I thought, mm. oh my gosh, surely I'm not ever going to be okay if A, B, C, and D happen. And all those things, ha things happened. And I got severe PTSD, had to work through all of that. And I got to this point in my life where I was like, everything bad has happened to me and I'm alive and I'm sort of okay. Um, and I just got to a place where I realized who cares if I fail? I just have to try it. And so that's kind of how I get through all of the busyness. I'm like, you know what? If I take on too much and I fail, it's a learned lesson. And I'll either learn how to manage my time better or I'll learn to say no and I'll learn to limit myself. So I've really, really come to realize that fear is legitimately the only thing that can stop you um, because the failure is not... It's just, it's just another roadblock, you know? So what? Yeah. You know, move on. I yeah. actually think that's, I think that's an extraordinary story because I, here's the way I look at it. God is so sweet. I mean, that, that sounds like a funny thing to say after all that you've said, but he's so sweet. He will do anything to help you or allow anything. I'm not saying he caused that, but allow anything to happen to, to make you into the person he wants you to be. You know, and because I was the same way, I I was, I hated that even the idea of failure, and so I felt the same way with my first my first husband. I stayed way too long because I thought I could fix everything. You know, mm -hmm. and that's just not how life is. Life is full of failure and disappointment mm -hmm. and hard things and joyful things, and we're supposed to live through it victoriously. Right. Yeah, I actually like kind of the opposite i've always been like i'm gonna try it and if i don't like it and i don't succeed I'll, I'll hurry up and move to the next thing so i gave myself my 20s to fail as much as possible to find what i liked um yeah, i'm so used to failure it's crazy i'm like <laughs> i'm good with it um you kind of bring through all that and i think it's like it's so you had so much heavy stuff happen and you did talk to me and angela about this before and i think it would be nice for you to share like what got you through that because you went through so much and you did still have multiple businesses that you were going through. Um, so tell everybody like, you know, when you were in that dark spot, like where was the light for you? So, so the, the funny, yeah, it was a lot. I, I kind of blow through the story often because for mm -hmm. me, it all happened at once. Um, mm -hmm. But for, for me, um, I really didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. When all this happened, I just kept thinking like, what mm -hmm. next? stopped saying it can't get any worse because it always got worse mm. um i didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel but my mom who um really had a tremendous life herself always taught me you just have to you just have to keep going just never give up keep going and that's literally what i did and i figured uh it i i can't do anything to control this um, but what got me through it, and I think this is so important for everyone, I tell everyone, get a battle buddy. So when you're going through hell and you're going through war, you need someone to have your back. So for me, I'm lucky enough to have a sister. I always say it's the best gift my mom ever gave me was a sister because she, um, you know, the night we found my daughter um, after she was killed, I called my sister. I, I, I just was laying on my floor and the pain... I was feeling from grief and shock was so intense that I thought I was having a heart attack. Like I had physical pain that I have never experienced in my life. Um, I mean, and I, and I gave birth naturally at home. This pain was worse. And I was on the floor feeling like, I think I'm going to die. And I called my sister and she was crying on the phone with me. And she said, listen, sometimes life is hell and it's, it's war and if we have to die with our combat boots on then that's what we're gonna do and that is just kind of what has gotten me through it is you just have to fight you have to fight um i say all the time death wins when we let it win because i am a christian and i do believe i'm gonna see everyone i love again even though it's painful now um and 
death only wins when we let it take us while we're still alive. Um, I have watched a lot of people over the years when they go through traumatic things, just take on that like spirit of death is what I call it. Um, and just die. You, they like, they're like a zombie. And I knew that my mom and my daughter, nobody would want that for me. So you just have to fight and a lot of counseling. I always tell people, man, you got to go to therapy. <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah. that's, that's what got me through. I mean, there were literally days where I was like, I just have to do, I would make lists and I would say, these are the minimum things I have to do today. And I would only do those things. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then I go right back to laying in bed or right back, you know, and I, and I have three other kids, so I didn't have like the ability to just not do anything. They were little, so they need to be fed and mm. take all it. It was, it's been a good fight, but it's really made me into someone who really believes that there's nothing that a human cannot do if they are willing to just keep fighting. Wow, that is such that is the best attitude. And and what you said is so true. Some people just fully take on what you call that spirit of death, that negativity, and they just let it wash all over them. Yeah. <laughs> to find them. Because because a lot of times our trauma becomes our identity. And mm -hmm. I've had to work with my kids because they were so close to my stepdaughter. We were all so close. She lived with me. Um, she lived with me until she moved out of my house weeks before um, she was killed. So we were so, so close. And um, she was like a second mom to my kids. Um, and when she died, my kids, like that just became, trauma became who they were, right? Mm -hmm. And so I really, really had to drive into them. This happened to us, but this is not the only thing that makes who you are, you know? Cause it's real easy to just take it on because you mm -hmm. feel like if you hold on to the trauma and you hold on to the loss, then somehow you're holding on to the person that you lost. Mm. And that's really true. Wow. I feel like that is the best advice to give to anybody that's going through something bad. And I mean, your, your sister, I just want to meet her. I feel like what a yeah. person. And then yeah. I, I know how you talk about your mom too. And I feel like her too. Wow. What? Amazing yeah. people. I know I feel blessed because I have an amazing one in my life. Um, and, and that's to me, like I'm, I had someone ask me, how do you justify that you say God loves you, but he allows all these bad things to happen to you? And I say, well, he put, he never promised nothing bad was going to happen to me. He promised I wouldn't be alone. And I have never felt alone in this. I mean, there are times where I, because I am single. I have absolutely been like, I'm, I'm on my own, man. But I know when it, when things get rough, I always have one to call and that's huge. That's huge. I don't think, I think mom, I think women need that. Yeah. That's, that's part of the reason why Kristen and I love this show is because I don't want any woman out there to feel like they're alone in any kind of situation and that there's always somebody else out there that has experienced something similar and has come out the other side victorious. And those victories, it, they they require the kind of fight that you are that you are describing. And so we want to encourage women to fight through those struggles because not only are we in an industry that's fantastic, but right. the fight is worth it because on the other side, it is just it's it's phenomenal. Good. Yeah. You know, I think that there's something so powerful about women who fight. Um, I think that. That's, I, I, I think it's this great like untapped thing inside women. And when a woman rises up as like a warrior and just fights for what she wants, literally changes society, mm -hmm. you know? I agree. Tell us about your real, real estate career. Cause I, I mean, your story is fantastic, but you're still having this success in real estate all the while. So tell us about that. Yes. And get this. So the year my daughter died was my biggest year in real estate to date. And it's because all my clients were like, oh my gosh, we got to get her referrals. And I literally sat back and recovered and they just fed me people um, because I have built a real estate business off of relationships. And I know that model is not necessarily sustainable for everyone, um, but I'm not 
I'm not a cold caller. I'm not uh, an Excel spreadsheet person. I look at those things and my creative brain goes, oh, I can't, I can't. <laughs> we love Excel spreadsheets. So I think it's important to find what makes you excited. So for me, you know, following a protocol and an email drip, that doesn't excite me. And I have to be excited in order to succeed. So mm -hmm. I have built a business just based off relationships. I don't, I call my clients, I text my clients after, you know, the transaction is over. We're Facebook friends. We, we I'll see them. We hang out. Um, because I think that for me, I, I came from a pastoral background. My whole family are pastors now. And I didn't want to do that, but I found my own little way to connect with people and be in a community and make it work for my business. So, um, you know, I'm so busy with listings. Oh my gosh. And I think that's the great thing about building relationships with clients is then you start to build listings, which for a busy mom is where it's at. You yeah. know? If I don't have to get in my car and drive around, then I can do things from my computer at the volleyball games, you know, when the kids are in sports. So um, I've tried to build a very listing heavy business just because it works for my model um, and what I like to do. So, I love that about our industry. Like <clears throat> if you are somebody that enjoys people, which, you know, most people that get in real estate, like mm -hmm. people, hopefully. But it, it does, it allows us to like be able to uh, build relationships and make new friends every day. I tell my son all the time, I'm like, my job is to make friends. And like last night he was like, I wanna have so many more friends. And he's just like going on, he's all excited because he's meeting all these new people in kindergarten. And I was like, I know, I'm like, I get to meet new friends every day. And I'm like, that is so cool. Like. You, you just don't get to do that every day. And I think that um, in real estate, it's it's so awesome to hear someone like you. Like, you've been a realtor for, you said, 15 years, right? Huh? 15 yep. years. And like, you're, you're friends with everybody. And, like, showing other people that it doesn't just have to be a one-size-fits-all. You have to go cold call, door knock, whatever. You're, you, everyone finds an avenue that works for them. And building relationships obviously works for you. So I love that. Yes, I do. I like it. And I tell people when they're getting into real estate, um, when, they, when they ask me questions, I'm like, hey, if you if you don't want to build relationships, find someone else to ask because I don't do that. Well. But I think it's really important to have someone if you're starting in real estate to uh, experiment with different kinds of models for building businesses, right? I, I tried the drip campaign, the cold calls, the, the and I, it, it was so zapping of my energy that I couldn't do it. And then I found a mentor, um, actually, uh, I found a mentor who was able to say, well, this is the way I do it. And I loved that model and ran with it. I think it's really important for us women to have another realtor call and say, hey, what are you doing? What's your business look like? Just so that we can kind of adjust behaviors, get ideas, brainstorm, I'm like big on community. I think it's really important. Yeah, oh, that is really important. Yeah, that that is so true. I'm, I'm enjoying like we went to Michigan recently to support some of our partners in Michigan, and it was such a thrill. To was was that not so fun? Like I had the best time. It's the craziest thing. We have we have this huge world with all of these people, and there are interesting people everywhere. It's there. crazy. Mm -hmm. People you can learn from, people that you can get inspired by, people that you can encourage and can encourage you. And I think that's what God created us to do, to be in community so that we can go out there and lift each other up and help each other through this thing called life. And, and that's what you do so well. No wonder clients flock to you. That's just fantastic. Thank mm -hmm. you. I try. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like that we could probably spend two or three episodes with you with little different focus points. Like we didn't even talk about, just say, okay, really quickly about your dogs. <laughs> yes. The turtles. I love my dogs. I should have thought ahead and had a little puppy. I have seven puppies right now. Um, we have, I, I have, my sister and I have the biggest standard poodle breeder. We're the biggest breeder standard poodles in Arizona. That's not a puppy. So all our dogs are, have owners 
and we just take them back once a year to do one litter with. Um, and a lot of them become service dogs. Um, we have, it's really cool. We have some dogs that have become seizure alert dogs and diabetic alert dogs, and they will literally smell the person's insulin changing and bark and let them know they, and they can detect it before it even becomes a problem. They, this one dog detects seizures before they happen. It's insane. So how did you know? And it's been cool. teach okay. that. Huh? I don't even know how you could possibly teach that. I am not that sorry. We <laughs> breed them. So we just make sure that we're giving the healthiest, best, you know, tested dog. And then whose dog is that? Mine. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm muting myself. He's so loud. <laughs> um, and so we have, we have trainers we work with because those dogs, it takes two years to scent train them. So it's a process, but, but we like, and my kids love it. It gives my kids, you know, something to do. And I'm big on um, just being in nature and being with animals. And I think that it's such an important piece for our brains that help our brains develop. And we're just missing it these days with. You are fascinating. <laughs> I know. I, I feel like I just learned something new about you every time. It's so cool. I know. It is so cool. You guys need to know this woman. So I'm going to just invite on your behalf people to yeah. reach out to Natalie and get to know her. She is worth knowing. And I want to thank you so much for being transparent and bringing your joy to our show. I have enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on, Natalie. Yes, thanks for having me. And, and everyone out there, reach out to me. Talk, I love talking about people's lives and just getting to know people in the community. So. Yes, you will be blessed. Reach out to her. Thank you guys for watching. Um, we will see you next week with another amazing woman. And God bless you all. Bye. Bye.